Hey y'all, happy new week. I know I'm popping up out of nowhere. Um, it's been a minute since I dropped a video. But if you watched my previous videos, then you know what I've been doing, what I'm um what God has me doing. Um I wanted to, to take the time out to talk about deliverance and how God delivered me. Um I was hesitant about sharing this. I've shared it with my close, um, with with some people, but I haven't shared it, you know, like, just put it out there. And I was hesitant because I know people, people are coming for me and they try to use any and everything that I say against me. So... Um, I wasn't going to share it. And then earlier this morning, I heard God, he said, he gave me, um, second Corinthians. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> chapter four, no specific verse. So I read the whole chapter and it's basically talking about how, you know, God pretty, he put his life, well, Jesus put his life on the line and died for our sins. And, you know, we know all of that. And how you're going to go through suffering regardless. And you're either going to do it and not be ashamed of doing it. You're going to do it and, and you're going to be 10 toes in. Or you're going to you're gonna be uh, lukewarm. And um, basically saying that don't hide from your glory. Don't, don't hide from... The winds in your life don't hide from, don't hide the winds in your life, basically. Don't hide the things that God has done for you. Um, give your testimony. And that's what um, God told me to use my platforms for his good, for his, for his good. And I have to, to share this, like, this is just something that I have to share. And, um, I hope it touches somebody to know that and, and it helps them, you know, continue on their journey and, and give them the faith that they need to keep going and and um, know that God will, t anything that you think that you can't stop doing, anything that you think that um, you just need to keep doing and it's not of God, trust and believe me. God will deliver you from anything that is not of him if you ask him to. So, um, basically, there's a couple of things. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is how he delivered me from cussing. I was one of those that will pop off in a minute. And if you come for me, I'm going to come for you. And most likely, you're going to get some cussing out of it. Like, I was just a, a, a cussing person. I that was just, I just grew, I mean, I just came accustomed to cussing all the time. And that was like something that woke me when I, you know, when I got the call on my life. And, you know, I'm like, God, you really choosing me? Like, really? And then it's like, you have to go back and you have to look at all the people in the Bible and the stories in the Bible of how God uses broken people. He, I mean, he, he chooses broken people to use. The people that are not perfect. And I'm, I'm far from perfect. Even on my walk, I know I'm far from perfect. But I try my best every day to wake up uh, doing right by God. Doing, doing what he's called me to do and making sure that I'm not doing anything that he wouldn't do. And so... I started praying, you know, Lord, please uh, uproot anything in me that is not of you. Um, deliver me from cussing, like anything that was not of you. Deliver me from it. And so I just, I, I just didn't know. I just didn't feel like I was going to ever stop cussing. I just didn't. And then all of a sudden one day I just wake up and I'm like, even when I hear people cuss, it makes me feel uncomfortable. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And um, that's when I knew I, I had been delivered. When I can hear other people cuss <laughs> and it made me feel uncomfortable, 
And even when it comes to times where I where I would want to cuss, I catch myself like saying, "What would what would Jesus do?" And there's another way to say things. There's always a better way to say things, and there's always a better approach to you know how you come across. So being quick to speak instead of listening, I had to learn that, and um. That was just amazing to me that God delivered me from cussing. And um, it's just, it just blows my mind what he's done in my life and how I've grown, even these past two years, how I've grown so much, which is leading me into this next thing that he's delivered me from. So two years ago, that's when I was going through, I, I filed for my divorce in twenty, the beginning of 2022. Prior to that, I was going, I was having so many issues mentally and um, I was living in silence. Nobody knew. And so when I filed for divorce, a lot of people were shocked that I filed because I was hiding it. I was hiding the things that I was going through. And um, so a lot of people were shocked. And um, I was, di I was just going through it mentally to the point to where I was hysterically crying due to my therapist. I, I was taking therapy every month. I was having to go to therapy. My therapist had ended up putting me on two different medications. Like it was like, I was just gone. I was gone mentally. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't this Tiffany that I am right now. Mentally, I just wasn't here. I just wasn't here, and I didn't care about being here anymore. And um, so over the past two years, I have been working on myself. I'm sorry, y'all. I hope the dogs in the background is not loud. So um, in the midst of me filing for a divorce, um, I started working on myself. I started working on myself and counseling. My therapist was helping me realize, you know, the things that I was going through um, stem from my marriage and that it wasn't, that had a toll on me mentally. So she helped me like realize a lot in my life and um, she had me on the medications. Uh, and the medication, when I tell you the medication really helped me like calm down and just see a lot, you know, like it just really helped me focus and know that, you know, things are going to be better for me. And um, so I say this to people, if you if it comes down to you needing to just get on medication for a minute, get on medication to help you to ease your mind and your anxiety or whatever, do it. Do it. I promise you, you won't be on it forever. With that being said, God has delivered me from those medications that I was put on two years ago. And um, it, it was the best feeling in the world. I honestly don't know how to feel. I, I just feel so weird not going, you know, going to bed and not having to take that medication. Um, and, and this all came from me just praying. I was praying. I was praying about the medication, and then I, hold, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me I didn't need it. He said I didn't need it, and I'm like, but, but it helps me, and so I was just so set on this bed, me needing this medication and not knowing that God had actually healed me, you know, to the point to where I didn't even need the medication. Like, it, the med I, was, I was already, you know, healed in that form. And I, I had, he had already equipped in me the tools and to use my tools, which is prayer, fasting or whatever, um, meditation, anything, you know, that he's equipped me with to use that whenever something comes my way that will cause me to spare out, you know, get depressed or get anxious. And, and um, so... I ended up getting taken off of my anxiety medication first. Um, one of I, I was taking two anxiety medications and a, one for depression. So I ended up coming off of the anxiety medication first. 
and um, I was kind of nervous about that because I knew I was like, man, okay, the depression medication, but anxiety medication was like, I had suffered with anxiety a lot for, for years, so um, I was like, man, am I going to be able to come off this anxiety medication? And so he ended up take. I ended up getting off of that. And um, recently, earlier this year, my therapist suggested because every time I have a session, um, and I have a new therapist now, every time I have a session, it's like I'm fine. Ain't nothing wrong with me. There's really nothing. You know, I can. I, I didn't have any issues or whatever. And so he was like, well, because you're not having any issues, I'm going to go go ahead and, and suggest that you start weaning yourself off of the depression medication. And I was like, wow, I didn't even have to ask him. And I told him, I was like, I was just so nervous about it because I knew I had tried to stop taking it and um, it would like send me spiraling downhill. And he was like, no, it's because you need to wean yourself off. And so he told me what to do to wean myself off. And so in the process of me weaning myself off, I got anxious because I was like, man, I don't know. Because I started feeling these thoughts in my mind. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm happy to say that it's been, what, two months? I think two months now um, that I have not taken neither one of the. I'm, I'm still on one because that also my anxiety, one of the anxiety medications because it also I take it for my migraines so um, I still take that one but as far as me taking it for my mental health I have been healed I have been delivered from that medication and the Holy Spirit told me I didn't need it and he was right so we got to learn to trust God and and everything Anything that you think that you can't give up, like even like, you know, there's so much stuff that people think that they can't live without like drinking and smoking and all of the above. And listen, I want to tell y'all, I'm hesitant to even drink now. Like I don't, I haven't, um, I think the last time I had something alcoholic was for my birthday last year. And I didn't even drink all of that. I drank like maybe half of that. So it's like I don't drink anymore either. And it's not like I was a heavy drinker. It's just that when I did drink, I would drink to the point to where I was getting drunk. And um, but now I'm like I'm hesitant to drink. I, I just I drink I now I'll drink wine, but I won't drink like wine to the point where I get drunk. Drunk. I'll drink like wine, one not even a full glass of wine. Um, but. I just had to share these moments with you guys to let you know to hold on because don't give up and don't turn back because you don't need it. Anything that you think you need, you need God more. And you realize that and, and you go and you start on your walk with God and you really focus on your walk with God and you're like 10 toes in with that walk. When, even when you think about doing whatever it is that you want to do, when he delivers you from it, you're going to feel convicted even thinking about it. And you're going to immediately ask for forgiveness. That's how it is. And I have to say that I don't care. I don't I don't want to go back to none of that. I don't want to go. I don't need the, the, the all that stuff. Like, I, I'm okay with it. I've been celibate for over two years now. Like, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Because I, I I love God more. I want God more. And he's showing me so much in this walk to where, like, you need him more than you need anything. And at least as long as you got him, you got all that you need. So all this stuff in the world is, you don't need it. If it's not of him, you don't need it. If it's not of him, you do not need it. And so we have to learn not to idolize things, not to idolize people. And, you know, put him first and, and make sure that we are more focused on what he wants, what he wants us to do other than, you know, what other people are calling or wanting us to do. Because it's not about them. It's about him. It's not even about you. It's about God.
It's about you serving a purpose here and bringing souls to him regardless of what it is, what, what your career is. Use your career, whatever God has blessed you with, use that in, in a sense to, to spread the gospel and, and learn how to use what you are, are gifted in to bring souls to God. Just the simple words of wisdom will help anybody. Trust me, I know. I've been there. And it saved my life. So, um, you have to look at things in that manner and know that everything that you go through is nothing compared to what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so, I, say, I said this in a community post, like, Go through it, but don't don't go don't take it like a man. Take it like Jesus, because we all have Jesus within us. It's just up for us to acknowledge that and accept Him, and believe in Him, and trust in Him, and He will deliver you from any and everything that 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 is not of Him. It's just a simple prayer. Prayer is the heaviest weapon that you can use against people. People coming from you, okay. You want to come for me? I'm going to pray for you. That's the best thing you can do. Tell them that. Plead the blood of Jesus over yourself and, and know that God is right there fighting your battles. Anything that you're battling with that you can't let go, know that God is, he is working to deliver you from it. You just got to allow him. You got to let go of that thought of I can't and know that you can. through. You can do anything through Christ. You can do anything. It's all a mental, mental thing. So when you're not well mentally, it's going to... It's going to make you think that you need all these things and you don't need it. You don't need it. And to hear the Holy Spirit say that I didn't need it. Um, it it's just to hear him say anything. It's like it just touches me and it, it almost makes me emotional, especially when he tells me I'm beautiful. Um, <laughs> it's just amazing just to be able to hear from him, y'all. So I just encourage y'all to let go and let God deliver you from anything that you, you're you're battling any addiction that you're battling anything that you're obsessed with anything that you are lusting after anything that you just feel like you just can't let go or can't live without surrender it over to god and ask that he uh uproot anything in any ways that are within you that are not in him and watch him work in your life god bless